I'm Kim Beal. I teach art history and I'm the associate director of Italic at Stanford. And I'm talking with Rebecca Goldstein, who is a painter who has spoken with me at the Anderson Collection before. And we are looking today at Diebenkorn's Ocean Park number 60. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Kim. So tell me a little bit about your experience of Diebenkorn. Mm. You know, I was thinking last night when I was looking at the painting that I remember I used to love the the series when I was in high school and my early years of college. And I always thought that these paintings looked like aerial views of landscapes. And I was thinking about how my perception of the painting has shifted over the years that now I no longer really think of it as an aerial, but more of a window. I I look at the painting and I think about what it would look like if he hadn't used these sort of like draw these drawn horizontal and vertical lines. And it would be sort of just like this kind of expansive brushstroke. And it would feel yeah. just kind of like maybe like a color field painting. Um, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't really feel like it would, I mean, it would be beautiful, but it wouldn't really feel like much. Whereas when he uses the lines, it frames it in a way that like, if you're looking out a window, the architecture would give, it would kind of give, it, the lines give form to the brushiness, almost kind of like the way a window would give form to, to air or the sky. So what kind of choices do you think he was making about some of these lines? Like we can see a lot of ghosting and some of the yeah. lines that he laid down earlier. So we know what he may have done first or at least previously. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of painting out and a lot of reworking. The lines are really um, playing with the edge of the painting. Like once again, they're kind of like framing the, this large expanse in the middle of the painting. Well, I think like on the right hand edge and on the top, I'm pretty sure that's like the original color of the canvas. And that's right yellow? The the kind of like the whitish mm. is like the like the ground of the canvas. And then on the left hand side, that kind of greenish teal. Mm is, I think, also kind of put down first. So does that balance do something to you from the left to the right here at the bottom part of the canvas? Zoom out again, if you don't mind. Well, for me, both of those sections, the like the top part, all of the brightest colors in the painting are along the edges. This like kind of teal green and the kind of reds and the yellows and then the reds and the yellows in the lines, and then the the white at the top and the white on the side. To me, those all kind of, even though the teal and the white are probably the layers that were put down first and should thereby kind of like fall into the background, they're really coming forward. So they're playing with like the figure ground of the painting. So there's this constant kind of like push-pull of what's coming forward and what's receding back. And the ghosting that happens in the painting is doing that as well. And I'm not sure how you could see that if we were in the gallery. It's really so high above eye level. Um, Yeah. But it's kind of actually really beautiful to like, this is just, this could be a painting in itself too, in these like purples. Yeah. I would have, I don't think I've ever noticed that purple there. There's a lot going on here. Look at this green. Yeah. Little tiny. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. And that purple really makes a a shadow under the yellow at the very top. I think in the ocean park series, because they all had maybe similar compositions or not, they were, they were all dealing with like a very kind of like narrow set of concerns. Like they had a similar color palette, a similar line work. Yeah. I mean, you have to imagine that if this series was the longest series that Diebenkorn worked on anything, he worked on it for 20 years, yeah. that he was still excited about figuring things out in this yeah. work too. Even though they share like a very similar set of, 
concerns. They're, they don't feel formulaic at all. And that's what I love about this series. I think there's so much, um, I feel so much freedom and spontaneity in, from him in these paintings. Yeah, I think that's really exciting that the less you allow yourself, the more you realize is there. Oh, that yeah. You have these very few tools or colors or shapes, and yet there are seemingly endless choices that you can make simply with just those limited concerns. Yeah. Well, this is a wonderful painting, and I'm so glad that we've been able to see it together. You know, I'm happy to get to see it up close in ways we haven't seen it in person. So maybe we have our own set of concerns and restrictions in the time of coronavirus, and yeah. we're making something of them. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for looking up close at this painting with me, Richard Deepencorn's Ocean Park Number 60.